and welcome to my first ever pen review. Today I will be reviewing Arteza's Everblend markers, which are available to buy at arteza.com or .co.uk if, like me, you are a Brit. Um, to start with, I should say that I'm not sponsored by this brand. They haven't sent me anything or given me any discounts. I paid for all of these out of my own pocket. I just really like buying pens and talking about them. But everyone needs a hobby. So let's say hello to Sabrina. Thanks. Thanks there. So let's get into it. Arteza Everblends are a standard double-ended alcohol-based art marker. Let's have a look at one here. As you can see, they have the thinner precision nib on one side, and then they have the fatter chisel nib on the other. Now, these don't come as brush markers yet, but I messaged the company on Instagram the other day, and they said they were looking at doing a brush replacement nib. So when those come out, I will be first in line to buy them. Now, if you look at the pen, you'll see that the color isn't actually written anywhere on the barrel. They just have these little colored strips at the top here. So, I really recommend not losing the lids on these or like me if you use loads of different colors at once and sometimes mix up the lids like I do on pro markers a lot not a good idea so definitely just try and keep an eye on that when you're working the best thing about these pens in my opinion is the value for money now I actually have two sets here I have the 120 set and then I also have the 36 skin tone set the 120 set cost me around 120 pounds and the skin tone set cost me about 33 pounds which means that the average cost for a single pen was less than a pound which quite frankly is ridiculous if you think about the price of copics you're looking upwards of four or five pound a pen even pro markers which are my second favorite value for money brand are still two three pounds a pop the only downside with buying these is you can't get them in single colours, at least not yet. So if you run out of a colour, like I have a tendency to do with reds at the minute, um, you either have to wait and buy the whole set again, or buy a similar colour from a different brand. Are you helping? I don't think you're helping. Okay, so let's look at the colours, shall we? If Sabrina will... Oh, can you not chew that? Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so here are the colours in action. These are my swatch sheets. Now, I recommend swatching all of your pens, no matter what brand you're using. Sometimes um, a company will send you a little swatch sheet for you to colour in, but I don't actually recommend using that. I recommend making your own out of the type of material you use. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm a sketch guide artist, so I just printed these on standard white cardstock, so I have the truest representation of the colour for when I'm working. Another thing to notice with all brands is that you cannot trust the caps. Now, Arteza isn't particularly bad with this, um, the cap's are fairly accurate, but at the end of the day, this is printed plastic. It's never going to match the ink inside properly. Also, be sure to let your swatch sheets dry before you star any big artworks, because sometimes colours can go on differently when you first put them on to when they dry out. So, for instance, this punch pink colour, actually goes on a, a very sort of bright orange, but when it dries, it becomes this lovely pink color. So just something to bear in mind when you're working. As far as the color range goes, the 120 set really does cover just about everything. They have a great range of colors across the spectrum, lots of different tones and hues within the color families, and a great mix of light, medium, and dark shades, which makes shading and blending really easy. So in that respect, the Everblend does live up to its name. However, I do have one problem with these pens, which to be fair is the same problem I have with just about every marker brand I've encountered, and that is the lack of purples. Now, I don't know if purple ink is harder to make, but for some reason it is really hard to find a set with a good spread of purples. As you can see with this one, you have some lovely light shades and some lovely dark shades and absolutely nothing in between, which doesn't make blending fun or easy. So for the rest of the colors, fantastic. Great spread, purple, not so much. 
Now, aside from my personal beef with the pen industry's lack of purple ink, the Arteza 120 set has one other big selling point for me, and that is the range of grey tones they provide. Now, with a set like this, normally you're gonna get a handful of cool grey tones and a handful of warm grey tones, and that's about it. And this is where Arteza really does, in my mind at least, push it further, because they give you not only warm and cool greys, but they also provide you with these blue tone greys, green tone greys and even some beige tone greys, which I absolutely love about this set. Okay, so now we've just about covered the 120 set, let's move on to the skin tones. I should say first that this set does come with some skin tones included. It has quite a nice little spread of colours, but honestly, for how cheap these pens are, I just figured I'd pick up the extra set as well. There isn't too much crossover between the two, so you're not going to end up with too many duplicates and you are getting quite a lot of extra shades for not very much more money. Um, within the skin tone set, you have a really lovely range of colours. I was especially impressed by the inclusion of these darker skin tones, which isn't always a guarantee with these sets, as well as these pink tones, which I think can really help add life to a portrait. My only beef really with this is the mid-tones. Honestly, these can come out looking very orange, very fake, and I just don't like that in my drawings. As well as mango, I just don't see how anyone would ever use that in a portrait. But still, I feel like there is enough range here that you can get some really decent skin tones from this set. So now that we've talked about that, now that we've talked about these, how about we actually try some out? Let me switch over my camera rig and we can get drawing. So what I've done is I've just created a bunch of really quick messy circles just to try out the blending and the shades on these colours. Um, I'll do a full illustration with these pens soon and I'll put that up in another video. So for now we're just going to check the blend. I've got them labelled here, I'm doing red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, skin tone and grey. Now obviously there are more colours in this range and there are more different uh, varieties of shades, so you've got some lovely blue-greens, you've got a whole bunch of different shades of pink, but I think this is just a good baseline to check the different colours, and also so that I have something to compare it to when I do this with other pens.
Okay, so here are the colours after they've had a bit of time to dry off. For some reason, I decided to do this in my cheapest sketchbook, so when I post the proper illustration, I promise I will do it on a better quality stock. Um, to sum up with this brand, honestly, I'm really impressed with them. I don't think you can get a better starter level set of pens for the price and for the quality, just all around a good brand. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram. If there are any other brands of pens you'd like to see me review, let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me draw when I test these out, also stick that down in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a great day.